Good morning, evening, friends. Here's your friendly announcer. I got some serious news to pass on to everybody. What I'm about to say could mean the world's disaster. Could turn you I'm done. Listen. How y'all doing? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the mental house. I am your host, Khadija. And I have been missing this video vlog, as they say. Well, you know, I've been, I, I, I just want to say I truly miss making a, a video for the last couple of days. It's been so hectic around here, but I was glad I was able to get back and, um, because I really want to share, um, an uncle's story and I wanted to do it before I took my little hiatus. However, um, I wasn't able to, so I'm going to try to do it today. Now. First and foremost, I want to say to all of you who don't show people, if you're in a relationship, um, I'm not at this present time. But those of y'all who are, have a special and significant one in your life, um, and you wait to just the one day to be special to them, you're really sorry. You're really fucked up. But um, happy Valentine's Day to you. And why don't you practice on showing your significant other that they're special. Um, <laughs> as long as you're on this side of the dirt and you're with them, try to make that part of your mantra. Um, it's important. Um, but it only starts with being healthy and happy with yourself first. Okay? So happy Valentine's Day to you if you celebrate that. Okay? But I want to tell this story because I would be remiss if I didn't. It's been on my heart for a couple of days. And my uncle passed away. And my uncle was an ex-Marine. And uh, he had um, he, he had Alzheimer's and dementia and stuff when he passed. So he really doesn't, he didn't remember a lot. Um, so... It was sad to see him go out like that. But my uncle, and I love him to death, he was a tyrant. He was, I never experienced any beating, any kind of abuse by him in any shape, form, or fashion. Partly because I had a crazy dad, um, and he knew that. And he knew it would have probably been, they probably, you know, that was just a hidden rule. But he was really a tyrant, and I watched him beat some of my other cousins to almost oblivion. And um, I just took it as, you know, oh my God, just don't cross him, you know. And some of my cousins would say, oh, we got to be with you because otherwise he'll give us a whooping. <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah, we'll just say we was over your house. Whatever happens, it's like, so I don't know what that was that they could use um, me <laughs> and uh, my family use me as an excuse and maybe they wouldn't get in trouble but as kids you know y'all do a lot of crazy stuff uh, but what I wanted to say what, which was real special about my uncle was in about 1967 1968 I was about 7 years old cities was blowing up burning up all across America Dr. King um, got shot um we just, it was worse, it was like the, worse than the um, L.A. riots, it was the L.A. riots all over the country, put it like that, so y'all already know, and I remember seeing army tanks and things going up and down my street, and I also remember them implementing the curfew, like the people are experiencing Baltimore right now, where you couldn't go outside at a certain time, and then I had these cousins who were like thugs, and they used to have the, you know, process and stuff. 
And they was like, yeah, I'm going to go out and see what happened to me. I'm going to go out past six and we'll see. And I remember getting a call because they were in jail. And my uncle, Wilton again, they had to go up and uh, get these guys out of jail. My two cousins, I think they were like maybe four, four, 15, you know, somewhere around there. They were young teenagers. They weren't, you know, like 19 or anything. They were young. Anyway, uh, to make a long story short, I'm going to tell you something very special about this tyrant. Because he was so mean. Everybody was afraid of him. Even his own children. I was never afraid of him. And all he ever showed me was love. And I don't mean it in an incestuous type of way or anything like that. It was just genuine love. you know. And I don't know why uh, that he could be such a tyrant and be so gentle with me. Um, but that's what it was. And when the riots came, and it came to Milwaukee. My dad, I even, I even, ooh, I even get mad sometimes when I even think about it as an adult. Now, as a kid, you don't know why it's going on. My dad left us and went to Africa. Can you imagine that? Leaving your wife and children, and you go to Africa and leave your wife and children to fend for themselves. Oh my, while you go to Africa and you know the riot is coming, you don't know if you come back. And they're going to be all dead. Matter of fact, that might be what you was hoping for. That's how I was thinking. <laughs> he probably was like, Lord, let me come back from Africa and all they asses is gone. That's what I'm really thinking. Remember Robin Harris said he wanted to come home and he just hoped the ambulance is there pulling his wife out. What kind of shit is that? My father went to Africa, left his wife, and uh, she had... We had, she had four children, six children, I should say, because I had a couple adopted siblings. And he left and left her and went to Africa. So there was no man in the house, and then there was uh, all this drama going on, okay? And we were afraid. I made a soul brother sign, because you had to put soul brother in the window so you wouldn't get your house blowed up by the... Uh, black folk, because they need you need to identify yourself, <laughs> you know. So everybody had to put soul brother in their window. My uncle Wilton came and picked us up and took us to his house for about two weeks or so until all the trouble died down. I don't know how long it was. Um, we were all piled there, and we felt so safe because he was a marine, and some about. Being with a Marine, I ain't going to lie, it made us feel so safe. You know, he had all this, he had a lot of weapons and things like that. Don't get me wrong, I don't know how in my mind I'm thinking, as a kid, you just think these people are infallible and invincible. Because I'm like, how the hell is he going to, as an adult, beat up Arab, the whole, you know, army, right? Because that's who going up and down the street tanks. But somehow we all felt safe being at Uncle Wilton's house. And Uncle Wilton came and picked us up and made sure that that woman was not in the house by herself with all those children. Um, and there was a riot going on. So no matter what people say about my Uncle Wilton, I always got love for him. And um, I, I, I love him so much for that. Because that, that was no way to treat your family. To leave them to fend for themselves while you go to Africa in the midst of a race war or a riot. Incredible. You know? And it also kind of reminds me of a stupid ass joke or sick commentary that somebody told me. He said, you know, his favorite Bible story is the, uh, Jesus feeding the multitude of people. After he administered a drug test to them all. Hmm. What type of craziness. I just really wanted to share that with y'all today. You know. And I wanted to pay a homage. To my Uncle Wilton. And um, on the anniversary. Of his passing. Um, he's been gone a year now. And. I had to share that story. Because. 
it's a part of my youth. It's a part of um, my gratefulness. And to think that when people say mean things and horrible things about him, I always think of that beautiful story. And um, he's always a hero to me. So, if you like what you hear, please like and subscribe. And I'm glad you were there. And I'm glad that I was able to make this video today. So I will be back in the mental house a little later on. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next time in the mental house.